You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. This is the Hammock Hangers Podcast, where we hang out and talk about everything from hammocks and hammock camping to the group hangs from around the country. Alright, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Hammock Hangers Podcast. I am your host, Paul Collins, or also known as Skunk Ape. We have got my awesome sidekick with me, Phoenix. Oh, you're so nice, Paul. Yeah, it's been a while, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta this... wait a while for that saltiness to Yeah, yeah, up. yeah. Yeah. We've had a few weeks part. So <laughs> This week is going to be a little bit different. It's just going to be pretty much me and uh, AJ just chatting. Um, uh, this is what, like week three or four that we have, I mean, just back into recording again. We had so many episodes in backlog because um, AJ and I both decided to take a little mini vacation and so these past, I think, three or four episodes were front loaded. So they were coming out as we were out on the trails and all that stuff. AJ went to Washington and then to the Shenandoahs, right? Yeah, we um we did about uh, four nights in Washington, D.C. And uh, then we shot over to Shenandoah National Park for a few days. Okay. Okay. And then I was up in Virginia as well. Um, up around the Triple Crown area, I hiked up through uh, up to McAfee a couple of times, McAfee Knob, um, Tinker Cliffs, just that that little section right in through there because um, that was one of the sections that in 2012, whenever I done my through hike, the weather was just terrible and I had no views whatsoever. So I wanted to see what it really looked like from up there at, at McAfee and Tinker and <laughs> all of them. Did you so, have any um, issues with the wildfire smoke? Uh, right before I started to come back home, it was, you could, you could see it. It was real hazy up there and everything. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people. DC, uh, it was, it was really, really bad. Um, and by the time we got to Shenandoah, which is, I mean, the same day, it was not quite as bad there. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like on the outskirts of the big cloud, but right, uh, right. It got progressively better, but it was still really, really hazy. I think the last day that we were there, it was really starting to clear out, and the skies were kind of opening back up, so yeah, we get a little bit more clearer of those views. But uh, that that haze was <laughs> the struggle was real. Yeah. Oh, uh, I talked to several hikers, you know, of course, while I was up there. Um, so I stayed the, the first, let's see, I got up there on a Friday, stayed at Four Pines Hostel that night, and then had them give me a shuttle ride to the um, McAfee Knob Trailhead. And I hiked up to McAfee and had a, had a great view, sat up there, talked to some people up there, and then I went another half mile north from there to um, Campbell. I think it's called Campbell uh, Shelter. And about the time I got there, it started raining. And it rained for like three or four days straight. So I was like in my hammock for three or four days. And, <clears throat> of course. Oh, man, Paul, I'm so sorry. That sounds horrible. <laughs> No, I, I, I loved it. Um, besides not realizing... Okay, now, I know this is stupidity on my part, <clears throat> okay? But every, just about every other tarp... I'm already going to agree with you. I don't know what up. it is yet, but I'm already going to agree with you. Probably. So just about every other tarp that I have has always been a Dyneema tarp, okay? And then I have the bonded tarp, Okay, which is the, the seal poly. Okay. But none of those need to be seam sealed. So, of course, I took the Ridge Runner up and the, um, it's the uh, Thunderfly, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and I didn't know that I had to seam seal it. I figured it was already seam sealed. The ridge of it didn't leak, I guess, because the way that it's made, it almost has like a little peak on it. So that was fine. But I was getting a little bit of drippage, you know, at the tie outs. So all I done was took my trekking poles and put them up to hold them out, which, you know, kept it off me. But so I mean, it wasn't a big deal, but I, I, I now know that um, not all tarps come factory sealed already. So I've got to get some seam seal. See, if you had a, a really good friend that gave you that tarp, they probably would have seam sealed it for you. But Yeah, I know. You yeah. just got the tarp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not a really good friend. <laughs> good friend. <laughs> oh. Did I ever thank you for that tarp, AJ? <laughs> oh so, like, God. this is the first, like, big major trip that you've done with the Ridge Runner. Well, yeah, yep, with the Ridge Runner or any bridge hammock. Yep. Right, so how, um, as far as, like, hiking and, like, for your trip and whatever, how would you compare that to taking, like, um, a Gathered In um, or, you know, when you did the trail last time in your Clark? I didn't see it any, any worse. I mean, you know, especially, you know, comparing it to the Clark because the Clark has the the little spreader poles in it also. So, you know, the, the, uh, pack that I took was my, um, Osprey pack. And so I keep, and how my, big is the pack? I took, I took my larger one because I took, uh, I took my 65 and I only done that because I took some of my, my, um, like my mics, my wireless mics, just in case I saw somebody up there that I wanted to record with. And, you know, I took my GoPros and stuff like that. Never used them. Um, but anyhow, so on both of my Ospreys though, they have the bottom compartment for like your sleeping bag, but I never use that for my sleeping bag. I always put my tarp and my hammock down there. And so the poles, the spreader bars, I'm able to just stick in and run them up the side down there so i mean it's I, I i've done fine with it um it was funny because like i said you know three or four days straight of rain and i saw so many people with tents because it would the rain would stop every once in a while but it wouldn't be for long and somebody would come in they would set up their tent and there was there was one night oh my god there was let's see I know like three or four tents off to one side. And then later that night, two girls and this guy come in and I don't know that they had ever stepped foot in a wooded area at all. Um, they had like a huge six man tent and everything else. And when they set up, they, they could not have set up in a worse spot. Okay. Cause you could see the trail from the, the water coming down and they set up right there. Uh, okay. And so in the middle of the night I'm hanging and I start hearing some, you know, some talking and I see lights. Well, I kind of, you know, look down up under, you know, look to the side and up under the tarp and everybody in the tents had their lights and there. You just see the light shining around and then, you know, inside the, the tent, they're trying to find where the water's coming in. The two girls and the guy, they, I, apparently they were getting really flooded out because the guy, he comes out, runs up to the shelter to see if anybody's in the shelter. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. He's shining a light in the shelter. So I'm, thank God there was nobody in there. So they start grabbing stuff and running up there and, you know, taking stuff to the shelter. And then they actually come back and they grab the whole tent and drag the whole tent up and just pulling it into the shelter. Why? I don't know, but. They did. Um, but I, I did kind of have to chuckle because I'm dry, you know. Um, but, yeah, I know I'm probably going to, to Hades for that. But I was dry. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, everybody was having to go down to the, the water source, which was from the, the shelter. is like one-tenth down. So it's only a tenth of a mile, kind of downhill. But still, one-tenth downhill in the rain, you know, you're getting soaked on the way down, on the way back. Well, me, I kind of 
pulled my my tarp a little bit and made a little funnel and i would just sit my bottles at the the bottom of my tarp <laughs> never had to leave <laughs> work smarter yeah. not harder that's it plus i didn't have to filter <laughs> yeah do you now like and you can probably speak to this a little bit time on the last time you're on the trail do you think you get a lot more people um Kind of like it seemed like they were day hiking. I don't think you would take a six man hike on a through hike. Um, yeah, no a long section hike. Well, it's it's funny because there was a ridge runner, and see, I mean, up there at McAfee, um, you know, that's that's always a busy place anyhow because it is the the most photographed place on the the AT and and all that. So there was a uh, one of the ridge runners up there, and he was counting the through hikers and the section hiker day hikers okay okay so now what is a ridge now ridge runner you're not talking about the hammock so what, what no no, no. Ridge, ridge, ridge runners are they're usually volunteers um that they they help the um the the clubs that maintain the maintaining clubs and what they do is they just take a little section and they'll go and they'll hike that little section and you know they they try and pick up anything that needs to be picked up if there's any trash anything like that they check on the shelters um you know they they help educate you know when they see people that aren't doing something they're supposed to be doing or you know whatever but they're usually volunteers um but this guy he had counted just that one day that saturday that i was up there and he left he got there early and he left probably around two or three. So, you know, and I think he said that he got up there like seven in the morning. So what, seven, eight hours, roughly. Um, he had counted, it was like 90 something, uh, through hikers and almost 300 day hikers slash section hikers. Oh, wow. That's a lot of folks. Yeah. A lot of, see a lot of the people though, especially in that area, they're doing the triple crown, which is dragon's tooth, McAfee knob and tinker cliffs. So there's a loop trail that you can do to where you cover all three of those and go back. And that's known as the Virginia, uh, Virginia triple crown. So a lot of people in that area are doing that. So, but so, um, what all y'all do in, uh, Washington and all that y'all just do the, um, like the, the museums and all that stuff or yeah we um so our, our original plan before um we um are taking our next vacation which i'll talk about here in a little bit um we were to do a little bit more of the east coast like we were throwing around with the idea of hitting like dc philadelphia new york city and then maybe going up to um boston as well okay well that's a lot of city <laughs> right um, and that's not really like our our natural style, I guess. Um, but when we decided on going back out to Colorado next month, we kind of shortened our trip. And we were just going to go up to D.C. and then swing back by um, through Lynchburg, which is kind of my hometown, see a few folks and then come home. Um, but we added uh, Shenandoah uh, National Park uh, kind of the last minute. Okay. It was the last time that we – went out there um the campsites in the national park were all booked up right um so lesson to that if you're going to go to these especially national parks and state parks are kind of rough about this too but if you're going to a national park you need to book your site as early as humanly possible right because again, we're looking at months and months ahead of time and everything is already booked up, especially like some of your bigger national parks, you know, your Yosemites, your Shenandoahs, your right. um, Rocky Mountains, um, some of the smaller Smokies. ones, not, Smokies, yeah, um, you need to book early. Right. Um, so we went up to D.C. and we did um, the museums. Uh, we did the uh, National Zoo, and we did kind of the monuments and okay. uh, the memorials and things like that. So it, it, it was pretty cool. Um, we we stayed at an Airbnb. Um, it was in a kind of, of a, uh, Well, 
the well Airbnb. it sounds bougie i've seen some bmbs that are not yeah. bougie. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> did you stay outside very, in your hammock gotcha um, it was it was in actually in maryland uh, where we were staying at so we would take the metro from there into dc okay. um, we did make the mistake um of paying for parking at the zoo and me being hard-headed and not wanting to give up on that $30 said, Oh, we'll just drive there and park. We already paid for the $30 for parking. So we'll just go. No, no, I would have paid $30 not to have that drive. Um, <laughs> there is a stop sign about every hundred feet with lanes changing direction. Of, this is a straight lane or a turn lane. Oh, also the lines on the roads there are only mere suggestions. Uh, <laughs> Kind of like the blinkers here in Florida, huh? Yeah, it, oh, it was it was it was horrible. It, it was, and you know the roads are narrow, and people are right. parking on the side of the road, and it and Lucy did not like it at all. Lucy, being my truck, uh, did not like the the small confines, and I mean it, the metro was incredibly easier. And That's why I try and stay out of the city areas. Yeah, I mean it, we did a lot of walking. A lot of yeah. weather was good with the exception I did of too. like the, um, the, the smoke and everything which right. wasn't too bad until the last day, but we weren't doing any like major walking. Um, so how long were y'all in, in Washington? How many days? Uh, four days. Okay. Three, and then you went to the Shenandoahs? We went to Shenandoah. Um, uh, we stayed at Loft Mountain okay. um, campground. Um, so, and that was, that was really nice. Um, and it, it I know, I, Paul. I know that was, I know that was by the, the AT because I saw your through hike. Video, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but the cool thing, the, the really momentous occasion oh, yeah? of this is was being, not your through we, hike. No, no, no. It wasn't my through hike. Oh, wow. But okay. It was when we went camping. Yeah. We did not take our camper. <gasps> what? We did not take our camper. And guess really? what? what? We did not take a tent either. Just all hammocks? All four members of the Glen household slept really? in a hammock. Really? Yes. So, so I, I know the kids like it. What five do- years and thousands and thousands of dollars investment to make this one three-day adventure <laughs> happen. It finally happened. So how did Dawn like it? Oh, no, she did really well. Like, um, we had... Uh, kind of looked at the campsite and I'm yeah. kind of glad we did. Um, and even then the pictures weren't super accurate because um, we got there and uh, there was a really good thing that we had stains and I had like made sure that everything in this little gallivanting adventure was going to work out. I had stands <laughs> upon stands. I had setups. I had extra setups here um, you know, I made sure the, the weather wasn't that cold. I think it was going to get down to like the low 50s, did you have the upper 40s. Did you have the hive? Had you gotten it no, yet? No, I, I do not have my hive yet. Oh. Um, however, I do. Um, I added a freedom stand that okay. uh, we got in that I had my cricket, I had my freedom, I had my Tensa fours, I had my yeah. Tensa solos. Like, I was. I so you were you were for, you were prepared. <laughs> I was prepared for if for whatever. For if this campsite was just a sheer slab of land, <laughs> we were we were going to make this happen. Oh, so uh, and I gave them the option, um, uh, and we'll talk about kind of my exploration into the um, the freedom stand and the uh, tents of solos and okay. maybe the t- tents of trekking trees. In a few, uh, in another episode, because that's a whole new adventure that I kind of want to talk about. Okay. Um, cause they are very different types of stands. Um, uh, also, I also noticed, um, that when I fall and hit the ground, it feels a lot less uncomfortable now that it did. It's you know, less, less of an impact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gravity still works, but <laughs> it's just not quite as strong. Huh? Yeah. The, 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 the landing isn't quite the tug that it used to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, so we get to the, the campsite and okay. the campsites at, um, Loft Mountain are, um, really, really small comparatively to like some of the other campgrounds that we've stayed at or state parks or national parks. Right. They're, they're relatively small. 
Um, they are also kind of I don't know, weird. Uh, they're kind of, some of them are tucked back in the woods, but it's like really, really overgrown shrubby woods. Gotcha. Um, it's not like, like a forest that you could like set up. There's a lot of undergrowth. Okay. Um, very rocky. Uh, so you've got that to kind of, uh, deal with as well. So if we did not have our stands, we would not have been aiming at camping. Gotcha. Uh, uh, so originally my, both my kids, uh, they're most comfortable with, uh, the tents of fours. So again, I wanted to make sure that they were comfortable. So I set, uh, both my kids up in tenses, uh, which was great because my son, we can put some of the pictures that I have, um, in the show notes, but okay. it was kind of in a kind of a goat's path out of our campsite. And that's where kind of, he was set up. Cause that's okay. really the only place that he would fit. Um, my <laughs> daughter, you know, I put her smack dab in the middle of the campsite. Um, but she, even she, like she weighs like, I don't know, 70 pounds. So it, it wasn't probably going to happen, but if she had a fallen out of the hammock, she would have cracked her head right on the rock. <laughs> like it was like, she was right on top of a very large rock. Cause again, that's, that's where we had to do. Right. Um, and I set my cricket up um, kind of to the side there. Another amazing thing. Um, did you use the cricket or did, I, did use, Don? I Yeah, I used the cricket. Okay, so um, what Don use? Uh, Don got the only set of trees. <laughs> oh, okay. That we had gotcha. to set up. Okay. Um, so I used the cricket and guess what? Um, with my modifications uh-huh. um, to my uh, Franken Ridge Runner that I've, modified everything too. Uh-huh. I was able to comfortably hang my ridge line or my ridge runner on the cricket and really? sleep the night. Yep. Really? Yeah. With so, shortening uh, the dog bones and all that stuff? Yeah. And there's a way that you've got to, I'm going to do a video on it. Okay. Um, so well, I know you've done one video for the, uh, for the tarp. Was it a tarp? No. No, um, so no, 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 we, no. That was um, one of your hammocks. Yeah. So, in the Yobo uh, neighborhood uh, Facebook group, somebody had asked about the, uh, will the war on XLT fit on a cricket? That's and right. It, That's right. It, it definitely does. Um, but with, it, it doesn't allow a lot of like tightness to the ridge line. Right. Um, so the, the ridge line is pretty saggy and that can get annoying. It's not a game breaker. I mean, you still use it, but it's just kind of annoying. So I was just showing a way to kind of wrap your, uh, original on around a carabiner kind of tighten it yeah tighten that up to kind of bring that net off your face so you're not feel like you're being waterboarded by a bug net <laughs> in the middle of the night <laughs> um, but yeah um was able to do that uh another really cool thing that i discovered um, and again i've had this for probably about five years and i haven't been able to figure it out but i was able to kind of figure out the uh tensor four tarp pole extenders um, for that. Okay. So I was able to set my daughter up with a nice tarp. Um, and I was scrambling to set up the tarps and stuff on the second day because they weren't calling for rain. Then they were calling for rain, but it was only like 50% chance. And so I was like, ah, yeah, I noticed the tarps. it's funny. The weather up there is as bad as the weather down here in Florida, oh, because I would sit there and I'd look at the, the, you know, radar and everything, the forecast. And it was, a, you know, no rain. And then all of a sudden it starts raining. It's like, what in the world? And then I'd look at the, the, you know, forecast again. And it's like 90%. It's like, well, good God, you know, and it was, it was constant. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to say anything about Florida weather anymore. <laughs> but, but yeah, we, um, we were able to do that. Um, while I think the kids and Don went on one of the hikes and I just stayed back and made sure everything was kind of set up. So I played kind of like camp camp host, uh, for this hammock camping endeavor. Uh, but yeah, my wife slept warm. Nobody fell out. No one died. No one was cold. Um, I I did get some of the uh, hammock gear sells them the draft plugs, uh, the down draft plugs. Okay, for the, for the, uh, the, the quilts. quilts. Yeah. Um, so that was really really good. Those um, worked pretty good. Oh yeah, they worked really really well. Okay, what um, do you do? Just stuff them down into the. The yeah, they're kind of like a like a I don't know, maybe like an eight inch disc. Okay. Um, of down, um, and you just kind of plug them in and cinch it up, and that down just covers up the hole. 
Um, so I use one of them on my uh, Jacks Are Better uh, Shenandoah quilts that I have. Okay. Um, which, man, I, I'm, I'm leaning to Jack, Jacks Are Better might be my new favorite under quilts. Really? Yeah. They're they're really nice. They're, that the the under quilt and the top quilt is just yeah super nice. Um, but I was able to set everybody up. Everybody slept great for the couple nights. Um, I was able to set up my Ridge Runner and my Cricket, which makes me crazy excited, even though my hive should be coming, so that should make that even easier. Um, but it was it was really nice. And um, both my kids were in gathered ends. My wife was in uh, uh, Ridge Runner because that's what the hammock that she slept in at Hancon. And so she said I was comfortable in that, and I just kind of ran with it. Um Actually, no, I take that back. She was not in a Ridge Runner. She was in my Banyan. She was in one of my Banyans. Okay. Um, but it had, uh, even though it was only supposed to get to like the low low 50s, upper 40s. Right. She still had like the winter cover on because she likes everything dark. And right, right. So, again, I, I was covering all of my bases. And Did y'all have to deal with a lot of humidity and stuff? Because I know there was no, a couple of nights. No. There was a couple of nights that... Um, Every, everything was just damp. I mean, just because of the amount of rain and everything. Mm-hmm. And there was so much humidity in the, the air that I'd, I'd get into my, my quilt and it was just kind of sticky from the, the dampness and everything. Mm-hmm. But, um, the, I mean, it's, I mean, three or four days of rain, there's a lot of moisture in the air. Yeah. You know, we, so. we didn't have too much trouble with the humidity or condensation okay. or anything like that. So, um, and, we already have had some conversations where it started like, well, the next time we do this. So I was like, yes, victory. You know what that uh, means? Exactly. That means I can buy more gear. <laughs> That's really what I was thinking, but <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> no, no, it was a, it was a big success. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that that it kind of works out because I, I know it's been a, it's been a mid a year long process and she definitely still prefers the the camper and when we go out to Colorado next month we definitely will be taking uh, the pop up but yeah. Um, yeah what what about at Hancon is she going have you bring the camper to Hancon or is she going to stay in a, a hammock the whole time mm. Mm. I, I I think I have talked her into definitely 100% staying in a hammock at least one night. Yeah. I mean, but we'll see. Baby steps fall. You ought to tell, her, she, you ought to tell her she's been to Hang Con enough years that she is now initiated and it, it's a must. It's a must. However, a must. she is coming to like do a lot of the jobs that I don't like. That's true. So where if she wants to sleep in a, if she wants to sleep in a, in a, in a camper, I have no problem with that. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. I'm sure she, I'm sure like my wife, she has final word anyhow. So yeah, it's like, <laughs> Oh, you're going to take care of registration. Oh, you, I'll bring a bed out for you. I don't care. How many, how many of those tickets do you still have that you got to separate and put in envelopes? Yeah. I, I'm mm-hmm. hoping to do like I did this year and really take care of that. Is but, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to stay on you about so, it. <clears throat> um, so, so I, our trip went really, really well. Weather was great. Good deal. Um, and so if anybody's out there looking um, to kind of take the whole gang out and are looking for pointers, um, I would say really check on your campsite. Uh, really get an idea of what you are going to be prepared for. Are you going to have trees? Um, now, some websites when you are booking, like state parks and county parks and national parks, if you click on, they'll have a little thumbnail of the campsite. It's kind of like a... a half reared picture of the campsite. Um, but if you go to some places like campsite photos.com, I think is what it is. Um, some, sometimes they have a little bit better pictures to give you kind of an idea. Um, especially with hammock camping, we kind of require trees. If not really invest in your stands. Um, right. you can't go wrong with uh, any of the stands from Tensa or any of the stands from Yobo. Um, kind of choose your own adventure with that. Um, like I said, I'm kind of venturing out into trying out some of the more um, monopod, bipod stands um, and kind of perfecting what that looks like. Um, 
the sandy ground in my backyard isn't exactly providing for a very stable foundation. I've got, I've got some of the uh, spades oh, okay. for you to use Good. if you want to try them. Yeah, I've got um, – so I ordered some of the Peggy Pegs that Tensa sells. Okay. Um, I've got a bunch of the orange screws because yeah. um, I, I really like those. Uh, and well, the, I also bought some of the um, boomsticks as well. In the, uh, I mean, if you got a sandy area, um, I get, I'll let you use um, my uh, spades that I okay. got from Kristen and Cal. Okay, yeah. Because those there, I mean, that's what they're for is the the sandy, like sugar sand type. Yeah, real sandy it, our, our backyard is, is really really sandy and i don't know um i'm thinking maybe with some of them i I just might need three of the anchor points instead of just the two right um now granted i'm 30 pounds under the weight limit so you're probably 30 pounds under my limit now uh but (laughs) i don't really know how to take that (laughs) um my butt needs to go on a diet. Is <laughs> what how, how it should be taken. <laughs> um, but really, it was a compliment. Are, seems like a way to go to guarantee that you'll have success. Um, now, when we were out there, um, I right. was able to uh, walk around the campsite the first night, and who would have thunk it? I ran into a hammock camper, a legit. A uh, person that was camping in a hammock. It wasn't oh, yeah? just some nine foot that someone threw in the tree because I saw a few of those. But this guy had like a tarp. This guy like was doing it. He had a um, setup. So I got really really excited, you know, like I do. So ferret came out, and you know I'm scampering over to like talk to this guy. The guy's from <laughs> Germany. Oh uh, yeah, kind of speaks all right English. Um, and so he was actually um, that was his last night in Shenandoah. He had actually come from DC as well. Uh, he had like a 10 day vacation. So he flew over from Germany, um, stayed in DC for a while, headed over to Shenandoah like us and was going back, um, to DC and then up to New York. And then he was flying out to, um, uh, back to Germany. Uh, but I, I, I asked him and I hope he did well because he did not have an underquilt and it was supposed to get chilly that night. I mean, chillier than, you know, 69 degrees. Um, and, but he said he was fine. So hmm. I just hope, um, Han, I think his name was Hans, uh, kind of made it. I think Germany is a little colder. It. Germany is usually a little colder of a place anyhow, isn't it? Well, this was the first time that he had hammock camped. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think they have a lot of cold weather over that way too, though. So uh, I mean, he so, might've been used to a little cooler weather. I don't know. Yeah, Did he, you see he, any, cause I know you was up there near the, the AT. Yep. And we um, actually went on the AT for a little bit. Um, did you see any any through hikers or anything? I did. Through? I did. did you? Okay. Um, I ran into one, and I wanted so much to just talk to him because I asked him, um, "It's like, are you a tenter? Or are you a hammock camper?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm doing it in a hammock." And so again, you know, the squirrel came <laughs> out, and I, I, I would, it, it was obviously like this guy didn't really want to like talk to me that much because he just wanted to get down the well, trail. Yeah, get the miles. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, but yeah, he was a hammock camper and he was from, um, I want to say Nebraska. Did you get his trail name? I did not. No. Uh, he, w- he was kind of like, talk, 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 gone. <laughs> because I told him about the podcast too. And he was like, oh, I don't have, I don't think I would have that much to say. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. Like, we kind of covered that. We talk a lot. Yeah. I mean, you, you saw him in the Shenandoah and that is, very easy hiking for somebody that started out in Georgia. Right. Once they get there, I mean, it's so, I mean, he was, he was probably doing, you know, probably 25 miles a day easily through there. 2025. But, but I thought it was cool that of all people that I ran into, I ran into a hammock camp. I just wanted to like talk to him about gear and, you know, kind of geek out for a minute, but, yeah, right, <laughs> right. But so, it was really cool that we were able to do that. And I, I don't know if how many people saw my video, but I, I, I filmed my brew hike of the the AT for twenty twenty three. Yeah, go ahead and get it out your system. Talk about um, some. Yeah, I, I don't even know the start that I started at. I could probably go back in the pictures and look 
but um yeah so i started my through hike um about uh 7 30 and uh, i finished um probably about 7 30 and 20 seconds i had i had hiked the entire width of, i don't of even know that it took you 20 seconds to to hike it yeah i um uh, i didn't even need a water break i didn't have to <laughs> entire width i i persevered um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna create you a shirt i'm gonna get you a shirt because you you've through height what what do you what are you calling it you're calling it weebo right a westbound weebo, yeah I went westbound, westbound. West, yep. yep, Westbound. Um, it sounds a lot better than Ebo. <laughs> Ebo, that's something else. Uh, so, but Weibo, yeah, yeah, Ebo sounds too much like emo. Um, <laughs> so Weibo. <laughs> so you've Weiboed the AT and you've Weiboed the PCT. No, right? no, I've, I've Weiboed the um, the AT. Okay, like twice. But this one I got on film. Oh, I so just you to got make sure oh. that it, it on film or it didn't happen. Um, <laughs> now this summer. Uh, we are going to be um, out in the Twin Lakes region, and which is CDT a CDT runs right through there. So guess what? Phoenix is going to be through hiking the CDT next month. Weibo style. Weibo, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I am so, so going to have you a shirt made. <laughs> alas, uh, I will not make it out to Colorado or uh, out to California this year to complete the Triple Crown. Um, I thought you had already done the CT. Uh, no, no. CPT, I, though. Well, I oh, sorry, done, the PCT. I have not done the PCT. No, I, the farthest thought, west I, that I've been is uh, Utah. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know exactly where this, the PCT uh, kind of runs through, but I don't I don't think we've been as far west. Now, uh, probably that'll probably happen in maybe two years because, yeah. like, I really want to go out and see – sequoia and redwood like that that is yeah. probably top five of my bucket list that's one of my bucket lists to too go. yeah i did actually see somebody that we know also really yep yep um she's actually through hiking the at right now and um she was actually one of the uh the guest at the woods hole weekend that mighty blue jester and and i done last oh, year okay. last october but she also lives down here and comes to hang all the time and that's you, uh, you you probably know the name i don't know if you'll um be able to put a face to her or not but debbie parsons i know i know you've met yes. her yes i know you've met her yes I, I, you probably just can't put a face to her I meet so many people at Hang Con, but oh, yeah, know. the We're name definitely do. sounds familiar. But yeah, so <clears throat> I knew that she was she, in the, Does she live in Gainesville? No, no, she lives um, over there near, not far from Brooksville. Okay, so I'm thinking about somebody else. Yeah, yep, yep. But um, I knew that she was doing a through hike, and um, from her uh, Facebook post and stuff like that, I knew roughly where she was, and it just happened that she was just before she was around the Parisburg area um whenever i was going up to to uh you know do mcafee and everything and uh so she knew i was up there and i I told her you know that i was there you know at that shelter and everything so i'm laying there in my shelter in my hammock and uh all of a sudden i hear somebody's like i smell a skunk ape here (laughs) (laughs) "Ah, what's up (laughs) nice nice so yeah, she, um, her, and her hiking buddy um, had stopped for just a, a couple of minutes to to chit chat, and then they uh, headed on. Um, so they had because they had stayed at Four Pines the night before, and so they were trying to get some miles in and everything. And uh, I think they went to the shelter. I think just past um, Tinker Cliffs, which would have been another, probably, I think from the shelter that we were at, I think something like another eight miles or something like that roundabout. So they had already hiked what is it, like 10 miles or something like that. Eight or 10 miles. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah. Um, so next month, um, we're going to be heading out to Colorado. We're going to be doing, um, the great sand dunes, um, and Ridgeway, um, okay. and Telluride. And then we're going to be going up to Black Canyon and the Gunnison and then heading back through um, 
Colorado Springs before we're heading home. So uh, be on the lookout for those pictures because um, I, I can't tell you how many people say that they kind of follow vicariously our summer vacations through um, my Facebook and our pictures. I know I do. Like that. I know I do. Um, it's 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 really cool that people you know kind of in, enjoy kind of some of the uh, spectacles that I see out west through those. Right. So I'm I'm really happy to um, see those. Uh, so we'll be sharing a lot of those pictures um, on our um, Hankon uh, Instagram. Uh, we'll be posting some of those on our Facebook page as well. Um, okay. If you're interested in following me on Instagram. Uh, you can uh, I post a little bit more. I'm more of a, like a micro picture taker. So I like, you know, really up close pictures of plants and, you know, I, I take a little bit more obscure pictures. So um, you take a, a lot of scenery like, pics. So when you're out yeah. West, I noticed that you take more, more scenery pics when you're out there than you do when you're over this way. I, I just, and this is something that we talked about um, with my wife when we went to Shenandoah, something that I, I always took for granted when I lived in Virginia and then something that always blows my mind when I go back now is just the variety of vegetation and stuff that is in so, somewhere like Virginia. Well, first. yeah, we're, I mean, cause okay. I know whenever I was up there, the, uh, um, mountain laurel was blooming and yeah. everything. Wildflowers are just crazy mm -hmm. up there right now, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really, really cool. Um, so, but yeah, um, I'm looking forward to coming back and uh, chatting about that trip. That when, uh, when are y'all doing that? I know you said next month. What? what yeah, day we're are you we are leaving on July 5th, and we'll be okay. back um, uh, toward the end of July, um, right okay. before school starts. So, okay. um, we're looking forward. Uh, we we me and my wife were looking at some videos of some hikes um, out there, uh, which I'm really looking forward to because my body kind of lets me do a little bit more of that now um so it that, that was really really nice um i know when we were in uh shenandoah the the idea of doing like a longer section hike with either you or my father-in-law or you know became more of a a desire mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. per se um because it i wasn't like team hiking sloth uh we get there we get there yeah great i what? still i still much prefer going uphill versus downhill downhill was horrible see i like the downhills oh man the downhills needs, no do you, oh. do you use trekking poles yes i do but still i i let me let me I, tell I you think, okay. i think also like i don't trust my my body as much as i should because right. i'm still like like i'm going to die like gotcha now, see, let me, let me tell you, though, okay, because it's, it's funny that whenever I went up there, I was like, okay, I've already, you know, I've already hiked this and, you know, it's no big deal, you know, three mile an hour pace, blah, blah, blah. I didn't take into consideration that, you know, that was 10 years ago. So I was 10 years younger. I was, what, a good 40 or 50 pounds lighter, you know, and... And I also didn't take into consideration that in 2012, by the time I'd got there, I had already hiked over 700 miles. So going up there and going, you know, straight from couch in Florida to trail up there, it, it, it humbled me and it about whooped my rear end. I mean, I, I got started hiking and when you first start, you know, start off, you go up some, some steps that they got in and everything. I made it maybe, maybe a hundred yards and I, I still see the road and I was like, Oh my God, I feel like I'm about to die. I'm going to have to get, you know, search and rescue to come get me a hundred yards. <laughs> you, know, I'll trail. you know, but uh, yeah, it was, yeah. Very humbling. Yeah, so I didn't do as much hiking as I wanted to in Shenandoah because of the whole tarp situation, but the hike that we did do, um, I want to say it was an elevation climb of around 400 feet. Right. Um, with like, uh, within a mile. So, right. I mean, not, not too bad. Right. Um, but I, I mean, it was definitely like some heavy breathing, but the, the heavy breathing kind of subsided after a yeah. while. Yeah. Well, that's and how mine so that, was. That too. was nice. That was nice. That was something. Yeah, once I had not once you get going and your lungs start, you know, working, you know, um, it does work out, but, um, I did end up having to get me some, 
plantar fasciitis socks, compression socks. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They worked. They worked a little bit, I guess. But um, now, when you're hiking with your plantar fasciitis, have you ever taped your foot? Uh, no, I have thought about it though. I have thought about it. Um, I just I haven't yet to see if it. I mean, my my plantar fasciitis is getting bad. I mean, even just around here at the house, it you know hurts after a while. So I may end up trying it, you know, even around here to see. But eventually, I'll probably end up having to have surgery done on it. Get you a night splint. Right, I, I mean, I'm some. not touching your feet, but I can show you how to tape your feet. Uh, <laughs> when when I was uh, when we mom was friends, really AJ. Bad and uh, playing tennis and things like that, it it, it was uh, you couldn't walk. And yeah, it's not something that is a quick and easy no um, fix. Um, well, you and remember it's really hard because I really don't like wearing shoes in the house right and my wife struggled with it too with her running and things and uh, i want to say for like maybe a year year and a half she had to have something on her feet even right. when she was in the house because it would just it would yeah. tear her heel up yeah in, in my house I, I don't wear much um you know most of the time but uh, i mean you remember what hang two years ago I mean, we were both in bad shape. I had, you know, plantar fasciitis, you know, kicking up in both feet. You know, your your feet were killing you <laughs> because of your extra weight and all that stuff. Oh, man. You know, so, um, yeah. So, um, speaking of Hank Con, while we're talking about that, we are going to... Usually we open up registration September for, is that, I always get the two mixed up. Is that Labor, Labor Day? Day? That's Labor, Labor Day. Day after okay. Labor Day. Yep. But this year we're going to open it up early. And so we are going to open up registration on the HangCon website. So you can go ahead and register for HangCon 2024. You can go ahead and start getting your super early raffle tickets. Um, but we are going to open that up on July 4th. I will have it up and going on the website. So we will, you know, make sure that we post on social media and everything, but, um, you know, at least hearing it here, you've got a little bit of a heads up and you can start, um, getting those, those raffle tickets. For some yeah. of these uh, raffle prizes, because I'm going to start I, reaching I out to all of our vendors and stuff. It's going to look like uh, this coming year. It was, yep. it was massive last year, and uh, our vendors are always really, really uh, generous, and um, we, we appreciate their generosity. And yes. uh, yeah, you definitely want to get in on that action. Yeah, we definitely have to get um, Hammock Gear on here at some point. Um, I know we've been been trying, but our our schedule and their schedules, you know, little. A little different. Um, so I think we're going to have to get them on a weekend or something at some point. But, um, yeah, um, Adam and his his gang and all, I mean, they really <laughs> went big time with the um, the setups that they, they put in the raffle last year. And they make Everything. amazing gear as well. Yes. I, I think I own more Hammett gear quilts than I do any other – manufacturer oh yeah yeah awesome awesome so um is there anything else that you got aj or no i i think we're good um well uh, it was nice catching up with you and yep, uh, i look forward to uh, a nice little trip report from colorado in the uh next month or so yep maybe willie can even record while uh while i'm out there there you go yeah yeah i don't see why we couldn't and um, when you get your um, um, high van, I want to get up with you. And we're going to do a one big video for we're going to set up the hive. We're going to set up the, the crickets. We're going to set up the freedoms and all that. And, you know, do a video showing each of the uh, Yobo stands and how they set up and we, we haven't stuff. really na- nailed it down yet, but there there may be a slight possibility 
of uh, Cal and Kristen meeting up with us again in Colorado somewhere. Oh yeah, so, uh, yeah. So we we usually try to uh, you know make that happen, um, just because like not only are they great vendors, they're really great friends of ours as well. So um, we we like to make that happen if possible. So well, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. It would also be cool if they like hand delivered my hive while I was out there. That would also be really cool. Well, you don't want it beforehand. It really I mean, I would it. love to have it beforehand, but like realistically, I mean, <laughs> I'm really not anybody special. So. <laughs> okay, you're nobody special, but you want it hand delivered. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no they offered uh, if, if they were completed, but in, in a way, like we're, we're so packed. I thought they've like, already been starting to send them out. Have they? Have they not? I I, I don't know. I, don't I know, know. Um, like Barry has his because you know he's off uh, gallivanting around at these things and stuff like that. And you know people should definitely see this species. Sure, sure. Um, but uh, I I don't know if they've like shown that. Maybe what I'm thinking of then is Barry's. Yeah. That may be what I'm thinking of. So I don't know. But anyhow, yes, it's great catching up because I mean it's been almost a month, or right around a month that. I felt a part of my soul, not not really with me. Did you? No, no, not, not really. Not I'm really? just saying that for, the <laughs> for dramatic effect. <laughs> for dramatic effect. <laughs> Why are we? Oh, I know, right? So, all right. Well, we will catch up again. Um, we do have some other, you know, some more guests lined up again and everything. So we're going to start recording with them. And, um, you know, until then, you know, Everybody, make sure that you go and check out our Facebook, Instagram, you know, follow us on them, subscribe to our um, YouTube channel. And until next time, happy hanging, everyone. Mm -hmm.